Ahora vamos a presentar, vamos a introducir a mi querida amiga, ¿ok? Una chica que claramente ahora la van a ver en vivo y en directo. Vamos a cambiar esto así, así la veo en el... A ver, ahí está. ¿Sí? La tenía a la mitad, ahora la tengo, le voy a poder ver todo bien. Tenemos a la vocalista de una banda que es impresionante. Yo solo tengo el disco Mask, ¿ok? Pero sacar más discos y ahora vamos a ver eso. Y ella se llama Margarita Monet, yo lo voy a decir en español, Margarita Monet. Y ella me va a decir, se dice, ok, ahí tenemos un poquito de a ella cantando. Y para mí hay ojos que tiene, ¿eh? Menos mal que no entiende nada de lo que dice, ¿no? ¡Margarita, cómo estás! <risa> How are you doing? I'm good, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, happy to have you, you know? I was like, ok... I, I made a list of all the musicians that I already have. Maybe I interview them or, or they are friends of mine also. I can, because doing interviews on Skype, you know, is kind of new for everyone. Yeah. Uh, probably for, for musicians, no, because there's a lot of slots, there's, there's a lot of promotion on Skype. But for me, you know, it's kind of, uh, I, I like in person you know i like the content I like yeah hugs you know and then oh, i love you i love your music <laughs> <laughs> how are you i'm doing good looking forward to that in person uh you know interaction again yeah But... yeah do you remember when we have the last interview and what year was i don't remember i mean 2011 2012 13 I'm gonna go. <laughs> Very. it was i remember we promote masks Yeah, that was probably almost seven years, seven or eight years, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> let me, let me, I, I'm gonna do a small translation in Spanish for the people that are watching right now live, okay? I don't know how many people we have, they're gonna see it soon on the top, but they, then they can, they can watch it later, you know, with the, it's gonna be with probably subtitles. Cool. Le estaba preguntando a Margarita cuando entre, hicimos la última, la, la única entrevista, yo no me acuerdo, ella tampoco, pero fue hace 7, 8 años atrás. Margarita, uh, that is your real color of hair color? No. No? No. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I, I, I want to I wanna know, you know, what is, what is the original color is, is dark? Yeah, it's a little darker. It's kind of like brownish red, but I, I enhance it. <laughs> I, I love it. That is why I'm asking you, you know, either, either it's natural or not. You look amazing, no? I don't know, Dave is going to be with us or not? No, not today. Oh, okay, okay, okay. On the I, I, right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Tell me, uh, uh, are you are you are you with with Dave? Huh? I, are you with Dave? Yeah, well, we've been uh, yeah, we've been in the band for like almost 10 years. Yeah, but no, 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 not 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 in not in the band. Not, not in the band. <laughs> I can't disclose that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, okay. It was well, it was my main question. Now, what are you gonna ask you? <laughs> well, <so> people guessing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, le estaba preguntando si si ella y Dave eran eran algo, pero me dijo eso eso es algo. Ella mantiene su vida personal y hace bien. Um, uh, uh, going back to the to the hair, I wanna I wanna ask you because remember you, I had long hair, no? And at some point, I, I cut it because mainly for sleeping, it was on my elbow, you know. And I, I every time that I was turning around, I, I really had I had a hard time, you know, to to to. It was the um, it was pulling my hair. How do you do for sleeping? ¿Cómo haces para dormir con el pelo tan largo? You tied or what? I don't know. I never had any problem. I guess I braided. it. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, to me, it's, it was like, no, I gotta, I gotta cut it off. Simple as that, you know. <laughs> Le estaba preguntando el pelo, cómo hace para dormir, porque yo también tenía el pelo largo, muchos se van a acordar. Y bueno, este, para ella no es problema dormir con el pelo largo. Let's talk about Universe, ¿ok? Y uh, the album, the new album, el nuevo disco de Universo, Universe, was released last year, right? Yes, November. Mm -hmm. November, November last year. Uh, you are, tell me, you are offering a bundle. What is that? Uh, what is the content bundle? Uh, we were, uh, so the bundle, 
uh, when the first uh, the album came out, we were offering a pre-order bundle, and we still have some bundles available. But what it was is I have the picture. Yeah, it was an album, a T-shirt, a guitar pick, signed postcard uh, or signed uh, band photo. Then some bundles included a vinyl or both vinyl and the CD. Yeah. <laughs> And then I also did uh, box sets, which were um, a, bo a wooden box that I painted, um, inspired You by painted? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that came with an album photo and guitar pick. And yeah, we tried to get creative, so it was really fun. I think people enjoyed it, and it was something different, so. Oh, nice, nice. Well, okay. Um... Just, just in case uh, you remember where I live, uh, maybe <laughs> I we can. Send your address. <laughs> <laughs> so, what people can expect from Universe? Okay, uh, let me, let me. I forgot to translate. Okay, let me give me one second. Le pregunté acerca del eh, porque armaron un paquete, pack, paquete, eh, con varias cosas. Viene con remera o camiseta. Viene con una um, púa de guitarra. Viene con, un, creo que una foto, el disco y el CD. Así que eso todavía les quedan algunos extras todavía, pero eso fue como una promoción antes de que salga el disco. Así que bueno, ahora les voy a preguntar qué, qué es lo que trae el nuevo disco Universe. What, what, is, what people can expect from Universe? Uh, well, they can expect to take a trip through our universe, go on an epic uh, space adventure in our spaceship <laughs> but it's an industrial uh, metal industrial hard rock album with uh, symphonic textures I would say and uh, it's very the sound is massive but very melodic uh, lyrically it's very um, you know it explores all kinds of different issues about you know the future um, about Um, you know, humanity and like the inner, you know, battles we go through and just, um, you know, basically how we are all connected through our universe together, you know, and um, but melodically, it really kind of takes you to another world. So that's what we wanted to create. We wanted to create music that people can kind of, um, I guess, step away from their daily life and just. Uh, immerse themselves in our music. Nice, nice. Well, a, a, an amazing description of the album. How many songs has? Uh, it has 10 songs, and then it has a bonus track, which is an acoustic version. It was released, the acoustic version is only available in Japan right now, but it's going to be available worldwide soon. So. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Much better that you're going to release it worldwide. Yeah. I want to get that one. <laughs> So, uh, what, what area in LA are you are you based? Uh, we are in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, we, but... are, we are kind of, um, I would say, like towards Ventura area. So, oh, on the west. west side. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, nice, nice. I, I, I don't remember. I think I thought back in the time you were somewhere in North Hollywood, you know, but I don't know if it's. I mean, we've, we've been all over the place. So. Oh, okay. Okay, that is why. Yeah, but it wasn't bad, right? I mean, it wasn't wrong. Uh, uh, yeah, so how, how, are you, how are you living with the, with the isolation? ¿Cómo estás viviendo en, en, así, um, en, en casa? I mean, it's, we're still, you know, we're keeping active. Like, we've done a lot of acoustic versions. We're, we're just writing a new album now we were upset that our tour got canceled we were supposed to tour with hammerfall and beast and black in september and october so that's canceled but it's going to be rescheduled so we're just uh, um you know working on new music and uh, um just weathering the storm you know trying to uh, interact with the fans and uh spread posit positive positivity because i think it's important to you know, have uh, have hope and, uh, you know, inspiration even in the darkest of times, so. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, uh, uh, ella está, le estaba preguntando cómo estaba pasándola en, en casa y, bueno, están trabajando en material nuevo, they are doing a new material. I don't know what I'm saying in English. I gotta say it all in Spanish, you know. It's just for you where I am, you know. When it, all the speech, I am right here. Uh, <laughs> 
Así que, bueno, están haciendo algunas cosas acústicas en vivo. Uh, the acoustic thing are you doing with Dave? Only you and Dave, right? Um, or or so the whole band? It's me and Dave. We did one song with the, our drummer, Jamie. We did Fire, yeah. and I was on the piano, and Jamie was on drums, and Dave was on acoustic guitar. It turned out pretty cool. Uh, it's probably the first song that we've done like that with the drums and acoustic guitar. So it's, it's pretty cool. You guys should check it out. Good. Yeah. Bueno, estaba diciendo eso, ¿no? De que estaban tocando temas en, en acústico y bueno, hicieron uno con Dave eh, y después otro con el baterista y, y también con Dave y también estaban componiendo eh, música nueva para, para el próximo disco y estaban tristes porque iban a, iban a girar con Hammerfall. It was Hammerfall and what, what was the other band? Uh, Beast and Black. Beast and Black? Mm -hmm. Ok con esa otra banda que creo que la dije mal, y se canceló todo, como pasó con todos, with everyone, ok, it happened the same thing, you know, suddenly we, we found out we were, you know, in jail in some way, I mean, in a very fancy, comfortable jail, probably, but, you know. I know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a weird world right now, everybody with masks and staying, you know, avoiding everybody, so, uh, actually, our new drummer Jamie he is from Colombia so um really wanting to yeah he's pretty awesome I'll connect you guys but uh yeah you know, we're come to South America finally so we're just waiting out waiting for this virus to you know get exterminated so we can get back on the road and come come play for you guys wow okay yeah to I would love to talk with him, you know, Colombian people, Colombianos y Colombianas are in my heart. I love Colombian people. I love Colombia. I've been in Colombia in the past and would be awesome to meet Jamie. Jaime, Jaime probably in Spanish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so why, why you chose uh, Frontiers, El Sello Frontiers? ¿Por qué eligieron El Sello Frontiers? Frontiers usually is more oriented to kind of a uh, rock, mm -hmm. kind of pop, you know, mel very melodic. They have some, some metal stuff, clearly, okay? I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I don't think they is pretty much the, the level that will carry very metal bands. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. though, yeah. There is, uh, like, they have Quiet Riot. They have a lot of, you know, bands from the 80s as well, but... I think when, so when we um, made the new album, we were, we're always kind of doing a lot of things at once. We had a Japan tour coming up and, uh, you know, we wanted to get the record out. We, we put everything into it and we were shopping it around. And when Frontiers came on board, they were really excited about it. And, uh, Um, they, you know, with the label, with their vision as well, they want to, actually after us, they signed quite a few bands that are kind of in our sort of genre, you know, more a modern melodic bands. So I think their vision for the label is also to expand and, uh, you know, look for the future. So, and they've been really great to us. And, uh, you know, we just wanted to get the album out. So we just kind of, Um, I just clicked with the label and, uh, you know, all the guys at Frontiers, they're really, um, you know, they're great people. And we actually, when we toured the Sonata Arctica in Europe, um, Ilyo, who was the label manager, he came out to our show and we got to meet them in person. And, uh, yeah, they're just great people and they gave us the support we needed. So it was a great choice for us and it definitely, you know, put us on another level. So... Uh, we're pretty happy. Nice, nice. Well, um, ella está diciendo a todo esto, Fisu, fíjate el nombre. Es Age of Paradise. Ahí te mandé un mensajito. Ah, ok. Eh, gracias. Ahí estamos viendo a Margarita en un video, ok. Uh, do you, can you see yourself? I mean, uh, I'm looking yeah, I, on you and then I see you put the video up. <laughs> I realize if you move, if you move, because probably on Skype, Usually you see the other Skype uh, and yourself. Yeah. Uh, because there's three, there's a trio. I mean, the, we have a um, three parties. So if you move a little bit the other one on the top, you will see the whole 
uh, Scream. I, I think so. It's what I'm doing right now. I just discovered like two shows ago. Ok, y se estaba hablando de Frontiers, de que, bueno, aparentemente estaban buscando, bueno, tenían el disco todo, estaban buscando dónde, dónde sacarlos, ellos se ofrecieron y salió la onda, y a partir de que este, sacaron a Age of, of Paradise, empezaron a salir un montón de más bandas dentro del estilo de, de la banda, un poquito más, más metal, más eh, sinfónico y menos pop rock. Eh, qué bueno, qué bueno eso. Eh, Margarita, how are you doing in a very macho scene, which is the metal? I mean, mm -hmm. I was talking before you started here about uh, Roddy from Final More, which is uh, gay, and he's in a metal band because Final More is, is metal ish. Mm -hmm. And you, as a woman, are you? How are you navigating in a very Even though we have this feminist, uh, feminines, you know, new way, I mean, it's not new, but you know what I mean, uh, which is changed a lot of things for good. But how are you dealing with that? I've always just focused on the music and uh, uh, just try to create the best music I can and create the world for it. Like, I, I get what you're saying, and it's definitely you know, can be tougher because I think you have to prove yourself a little more, you know, especially if, like, that's why I think for us, it was always very important that we didn't rely on, like, um, the looks of the band or, you know, we, we always wanted to put um, the emphasis on the whole band. So it's not just on me. And, uh, I guess that's that helps because that way it takes the you know it takes the focus off because it's all of us kind of together and um you know sometimes it, it can be tough because uh, you know we like release a video and then people don't even look because they see a girl singing and they're like oh it's another mm -hmm. girl band and then they automatically assume that we're gonna sound like i don't know like epica or uh you know some oh. other And with a female singer so that's a, the challenge because uh people tend to categorize you as like a female fronted band and then they assume how you sound like so i think that's the main challenge because i want people to listen to our music and then see us for who we are uh but you know at the end of the day all i can do is just create the music and just focus on what I'm doing and, uh, you know, <laughs> keep doing what we're doing, I guess. People are going to, you know, there's always going to be people making judgment, so. Yeah, yeah, but also, also talking about the same thing, you know, but in another, in another, um, another way. Uh, you go and play and usually... In, in the metal scene, you will find probably more men than women, mm -hmm. which uh, I am in the same scene, so I see that, you know, in a metal band, probably you will see, uh, let's say, six, seven guys for every, I mean, and three women for every ten. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, um, usually fans come uh, come to you and say hey i love your music and you are an attractive woman clearly you know it's, it's something that is you know improve or or help to fans to feel attracted to you you know and this is the part that i'm wondering how you deal because if you were a man in a metal scene or in a rock scene men usually take advantage of that oh okay, okay. groupies 10 awesome <laughs> you know For the most part, people are always super respectful and like even on the tour with uh, uh, Sonata Arctica and Temple Balls, like I was pretty much the only girl and like Kristen, our merge girl, we were, you know, the only ones <laughs> in the whole uh, group, but um, everybody was respectful and fans also, I think they, you know, you always get some, you know, minority, which can be a little too much. Well, it happened to me with Madonna, for example. <laughs> the only problem, I was 13 years old, and she was here in, in, in America, and I was in Argentina. So I didn't have any chance. <laughs> yeah, but 
Um, I mean, I like one of my favorite things also is just, um, you know, at the live show after the show, go out and meet people. And I think it's also how I present myself, maybe. So people have, you know, that mutual respect, like I'm, I'm very appreciative and, um, you know, because it's the fans kind of make who we are without fans, fans are nobody. So there's always that kind of mutual level of respect. And I think that's important. And I mean, knock on wood so far. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> experienced it. Yeah, I, I, I was listening to you and suddenly started watching the, the, the other video. And um, you mentioned something that brought me to the new, another question, but now I forgot. Anyway, um, I wanted to ask you something. Uh, you mentioned Sonata Antarctica. Anyway, okay. Did you see that we have almost five, uh, half a million people watching right now? Okay. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I remember now because I, I, I made a few questions. Usually, uh, since I'm doing mostly uh, red carpets, uh, I'm used to ask like three things, four things, and that's it. You Clearly, you are young uh, and you started becoming popular nowadays that everybody has a cell phone. It's like 10, probably 15 years ago and back, people didn't carry a, a camera everywhere, you know. And, and the thing is, now you know what you expect. Mm -hmm. If you were, if you are someone like someone of the Beatles or, or Zeppelin, um, when they started, you know, people had cameras back then, had, you know, albums to get autographed, but nowadays everyone has a camera. How are you dealing with that? Because you are pursuing to become massively popular. But at the same time, you you know you're gonna lo lose a lot of privacy. Yeah, um, I th you're right. I think it's just you know when you put yourself out there, you kind of volunteer to be like that. You you know you have to expect that people might take pictures or, um, and you know like the weird thing that was on tour is. After the show, everybody just wanted pictures. Everybody wanted selfies. And some, yeah. you know, it's like after the show, your your hair is like <laughs> like that, and you all sweat. <laughs> so, and then people are like face. So, um, you know, like beforehand, even like when we first started, it was a little different. You know, people wanted, um, you know, it's like they wanted the CDs and the autographs and stuff. Now it's like mainly they want a photo with you. So, you know, it's like, like I always say to some people that kind of always, you know, bicker about the changing world. Right. The world is going to change and uh, we have to adapt and make the best of it. And, uh, and that's what kind of we do, even like with the music changing, like just the industry changing over the last few years, everything's becoming streaming you know, we can cry about it and say, oh, nobody's buying CDs anymore, you know, or we can kind of focus on what people are doing, which is streaming music and, you know, Spotify and all that stuff and just, you know, being creative. And that's always been our approach to everything, just to maximize uh, what we can and approach everything with positivity and just, you know, be creative about things. So, you know, <laughs> that's what we yeah. can we can't stop the world from changing. No, really not. Well, there's still some some collectors. You know, I if you see back me, I have thousands of CDs, and yeah. there's still people that really appreciate the artwork. They mm -hmm. like to see who produced the album. You know, all the lyrics. Uh, I know the lyrics. You can have it probably online. Not not all the times. So clearly there's uh, uh, there are less people probably that in the past still people that are, especially vinyls vinyls became yeah. very popular he had great success with vinyls um, most people actually bought vinyls on tours like we were selling out um, you know at shows like <laughs> instantly and um, that's why like I really wanted to put 
a lot of focus on packaging the album and like the visuals. We, have, we even came up with um, had an artist Dresden Seven, and he came up with like an alien language for us. So throughout our merchandise, we um, you know wrote messages to fans and like the back of the vinyl and inside of the vinyl you get the cipher, so you can decipher our messages. And you know, to me, the artwork is always really important and the visual aspect of things. So yeah. I definitely want to try to make it appealing to people to want to have the physical thing. Yeah, I I, I feel I hear I'm hearing Dave whistling, right? <laughs> yeah, the birds. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know exactly the back. I see the, the background you have is amazing. Uh, I don't uh, probably you are in the patio in the backyard. So <laughs> I wish I am here. <laughs> and um. Oh, uh, you, you, where are you, I mean, where is your uh, ancestor from, your heritage? Uh, I'm, ha I'm ha I have Armenian, most Armenian, then I have a little Russian and Georgian. Yeah, we were talking about this with Fisu, uh, and I remember we talked about this, but it was like seven, eight years ago, yeah. and, and you say Russian too? Yeah. Oh, nice. Probably we have, we have uh, some family, common family, because... Some of my family were from Russia and Ukraine yeah, as well, you know, so probably we have. In Moscow, so I see. Yeah. And my sister is actually there right now. She's stuck. In Mos <laughs> She's stuck in Moscow? Oh, you can't really leave right now. Mm -hmm. My gosh, I almost go to Moscow and, and for just last minute I missed it and it was like, oh, you know, the, the, the Red Plaza, the Kremlin, all those places yeah. that... Cool. Have you been there, right? Yeah, I grew up there. Oh, you grew up? Oh, you grew up in Russia? Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. So you speak fluently Russian? Yeah. Kagdela? Russia. <laughs> oh, you can ask me back. <laughs> Kagdela? Loja. <laughs> <laughs> It's the only thing that I know. <laughs> Estamos hablando ruso. I forgot to translate, so they're going to watch it on YouTube later, you know. It's going to be on... on all the platform we are going in rock we are going in several you know local channels different places in the world That's yeah, awesome. yeah 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 it's, it's cool you know and and okay let me translate a little bit from all the last 20 minutes we were talking in in just 15 seconds <laughs> <laughs> so bueno estuvimos hablando un poquito de de cómo ella se maneja como siendo mujer en un ambiente bastante machista y bueno ella dentro de todo eh, pone mucho, se apoya mucho en la parte artística, ¿no? en la parte musical, eh, como para, bueno, y es profesional claramente, así que es como que el tema, el tema es que seguimos en un, en un ambiente machista, porque si la, la, la persona, el, el artista es femenino, es una mujer, por ahí tiene, por ahí no le saca el provecho que le sacaría un hombre a la hora de conocer groupies y, y fans y todo eso y se mantiene, ¿no? no solo con ella, sino que he hablado con otras chicas y pasa lo mismo, eh, lo cual es una lástima, pero bueno, en definitiva es así. Hablamos de... I forgot what we talked about, you know, we just talked about a few seconds before and I... <laughs> oh, uh, que ella tiene... Eh, el, su familia viene de... Bueno, ella se crió en Rusia, Russian, Spanish, Rusia, ¿ok? Uh, Rusia. Y ella tiene también este, descenden ascendencia, descendencia, es descendiente de, también de armenios y de georgianos. You say Georgia, right? Yeah. You say Georgia, the country, not Georgia, the state. <laughs> yes, country. Right? Yeah. Because sometimes I say, ah, you know, because I know Georgia. And yeah. I, I talk about Georgia for some reason, like, like a couple of times, and they start talking about Georgia, the state. Say, no, 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 no. East, Eastern Europe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, uh, Fisu, ¿tenés alguna pregunta para hacerle? No, no, estamos bárbaros. Sigan ahí que están bárbaros. Estamos bien. Yes. Está bien. Yes. Do you know any 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 Argentinian band by any chance? Any? Uh, I don't have any personal friends, but online um, I see a lot of people from Argentina sometimes comment. So. But not not bands. I'm talking about you know colleagues, other bands that you might know or not. No, no. I, okay. I, 
I'd like to. I will I will connect you with with bands, you know. Hopefully you're going to be playing in South America someday soon because you play in Europe and yeah. America. Yeah. Where and we went to Japan too, so we've been around um and South America, you guys are our neighbors pretty much. So we have to come soon. Yeah, you you didn't play in Mexico, right? No, we haven't been to any countries in South America yet. And, and what Yeah? I'm sorry. It's not <laughs> well, probably some some promoters are watching right now, and hopefully, once this crap happy finish, you know, I I start kind of a nod. I think this is uh, really over, you know, over. How do you say when over exaggerated all this uh, pandemic? I hear a couple of people that pass away for previous, you know, reasons and they put it on on the COVID tally mark. Yeah, that's what we've been hearing a lot as well. And what's concerning is, you know, they, a lot of the clubs are closed and there's, you know, no shows pretty much. So we're just concerned a lot of venues might go out of business. So it's... Um, but also, but, but construction is still working all yeah. over the country. I mean, construction never stopped uh supermarkets didn't stop and i feel that if we really have a pandemia we could stop the country for good i mean for two weeks everything unless it's an emergency okay and we must stop it or or just continue like everybody should have the chance to work like you as a, by playing and uh, I'm, i'm kind of pissed off you know because i feel that Uh, you as a musician are, are all the musicians are right now having a really hard time, you know, most of you. And the thing is, uh, I have construction right now in my building. They are renovating my building and it's a nightmare. So yeah. they never stop. There's no social distance, you know. So, well. Yeah, it's kind of a weird situation because, you know, obviously, you know, we're have to be concerned about people's lives but then it's also people's lives when they're out of work and then uh, it really is very hard on people's mental state if they're isolated and you know yeah. also just as detrimental if you're if your mind is <laughs> not healthy so it's it's just you know I don't think anybody really knows what the right um, action is for this sort of thing I don't think There is like a, not one country really handled, uh, you know, it's it's hard to say. Well, for example, in my country, they really lock the country. Yeah. Uh, again, only supermarkets were open. And now they are downsizing the, the measures. But the thing is, uh, it's like, well, they opened for two days, for example, my city and everybody went out. Clearly, they wanted to... Yeah. Yeah, the, get some fresh air. I know we went to the close to the beach the other day, and there's cars on top of cars. Everybody was out on the beach, even though they closed all the parking. People yeah. were finding a spot to just leave their car and go to the beach. Nobody cared. So yeah. you're restless and you know a little bit fed up, you know. But also the scary thing is you don't want it to come back in the fall stronger. So you just you just never know. I think we just have to be cautious, but locking everybody up for well, long well, what pissed me off is they open the beaches they should open the the store the, the stores okay and if you get sick at least uh you are getting money you are you know working and they open the beaches and people might get sick and and i i would rather to open you know all the commerce and let people start moving the, the economy again Yeah. Instead of opening, you know, parks and, and beaches, you know? Yeah, it's very difficult. And like in the U.S. too, it's, you know, like, for example, the government sent out stimulus checks and it didn't even, you know, a lot of people are hurting and they were, they were didn't qualify for the stimulus check. So it's like not even everybody was covered. So and the economy is not really going to recover instantly. It's just 
you know, we're gonna have to pay it back tenfold. So it's just... yeah, no, no. These these checks are not free. Believe me, we're gonna pay it back some way, some way. Exactly. Really. And you know, you, you live in LA, so you know how how high is the rent everywhere. Crazy. You know? it's, you, it's pretty much impossible to survive here now. Well, and it's, uh, when you came here, when when you came you came to LA back then when we probably met, uh, many many people from 2008 to 2000 probably 15. They went out either into um, Nashville or, or Las Vegas, mainly Las Vegas, you know. Yeah, so, uh, or even like Seattle up to Washington. Yeah, tons of yeah. people. They moved away. I mean, but, just I, to, but I'm talking musicians that. Yeah. They they were pretty much famous at least in the '90s and the '80s. So they they got a massive you know amount of, of fans and and work, and they have to move out. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is, I think people also make a choice where you want to spend your money. Do you want to spend, you know, all your money on rent in L.A. or, you know, buy something or you want to kind of live a little more of an abundant life and live somewhere else? So Yeah, yeah, totally. There's anything else you want to say to your fans? Um. Well, I, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and I want to thank everybody for supporting and uh, I think also want to let you know that it's a really important time to support your favorite bands. If you can, uh, you know, even by streaming the music or buying the album or merchandise. Um, I think this is the time that we all can come together and get through all of this craziness together. So support one another and stay positive and active. And I want to, you know, just thank you guys and mm. for having me as well. Bueno, Margarita estaba dándole las gracias a todos. Acuérdense de que los pueden encontrar en Age of Paradise. Age of, Age of Paradise. You know what? I say like five times uh, the last days when we're talking, Age of Forever, which is another band. You Probably you know them, right? Yes. And I said, hopefully, I'm not going to say Age of... I know I'm going to introduce you as a Age of Forever, which is another band, you know? I, was, I did it right. Paradise. So, Age of Paradise, sí. Bueno, estaba diciendo de que los, a toda la gente que si quieren contactarse con Margarita y con Age of Paradise y con Dave y con Jamie y con todos los chicos pueden ir a, a... Están en Facebook, están en Spotify, están en todas las plataformas que pueden escuchar la música, pueden bajar sus temas, pueden apoyarlos eh, comprando los temitas, comprando los discos, ¿ok? Eh, you still have some bundles, así que si quieren comprar, if they want to buy the bundles, they can do it, ¿ok? Right? Sí. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Okay. Margarita, gracias. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Spasiva. Uh, <laughs> obrigado en portugués. Gracias en italiano. And uh, that's it. I, sorry, uh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say it again because I didn't hear you. Muchas gracias. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know I'm a Spanish teacher. So we can, oh. before you're going to South America, to Latin America, We can have some, some, you know, uh, fast piece uh, classes, so you can go and, you know, talk fluently. Oh, okay, <laughs> nice, nice. Well, Margarita, again, gracias, thank you, and let's take, okay, let's talk later, uh, maybe tomorrow about the, the CDs, so I can have it here and, and show it to the oh, fans, okay? Yes, yes Okay. Thank Adios. You. Bye.